Hi, my name is Brian Linkletter. I'm here to talk today about investigating Linux network behavior using open source network emulators. The scope I'm thinking about here is the network in a laptop. I'm not thinking about emulating really large networks with uh, distributed systems or something that might look more like a data center. I'm thinking about the airplane scenario where you're trying to do some investigations either of network behavior or software, and you've, uh, you're, you're basically the equipment you have access to is your laptop. The tools I'm thinking about are standard, or based on standard Linux technology. These are not uh, proprietary tools. It's more of a convenience. These, the people that have developed these tools have put together uh, a series of networking technologies in order to basically emulate either containers or virtual machines on a laptop, uh, switch together, um, and to make it convenient for people to build laptop or to build networks. So they, they uh, orchestrate the setup and configuration of uh, virtual networks uh, in a user-friendly way. Many of these tools have graphical user interfaces. Um, they, use, they may use containers or virtual machines, depending on the tool. They may use uh, Linux bridging or, for example, in some cases, Open vSwitch to create the layer two connectivity between nodes. When would you use tools like these? I, I see a case mostly for uh, creating black box test bed scenarios for external nodes. You could create a scenario inside a virtual machine or running on a, a physical server and connect your uh, external equipment to it and, uh, and test behavior. You could uh, set up ad hoc network scenarios for testing or for demonstration purposes. And you can, if you're learning about a new technology, um, you can practice network operations in a safe environment. Um, you would choose which tool to use based on the virtualization technology that is most appropriate to the environment you're working in. On the scripting language supported, you may be more comfortable using a scripting language that you're familiar with, um, and on the user interface that you find uh, the easiest to use. So I wanted to give a, a few real examples of using a tool to just investigate some, you know, uh, scenarios you might see in a real network. Uh, these are fairly basic uh, examples, but I think they demonstrate um, how these tools can be used. In, in this case, in these examples here, I'm using something called the Core Network Emulator. It's based on Linux namespaces, uh, just has uh, Linux bridging to connect nodes together. It's, uh, it's based on Python, it's written in Python, it's easy to extend using Python to uh, add functionality to it. And it has a, a fairly useful graphical user interface and some interesting features on top of that which make it a little bit easier to use for certain use cases. Um, so you could uh, investigate some TCP troubleshooting. Uh, you could, for example, demonstrate uh, the impact of round trip delays. Uh, you could show how you might troubleshoot a bad link. And you can also investigate uh, routing protocols, uh, routing protocol troubleshooting uh, if the network topology changes or if you have a failure uh, in a routing protocol on a node. So for example, if we configure the, the network that I previously showed you, um, I'll just go back to that network. If we configure this network here and we are running traffic from uh, the PCs on the top to the servers on the bottom, and we want to test uh, basically the performance of the network. If you have been uh, uh, modifying some of the, for example, if you have a custom kernel that you're uh, developing um, and you've made some modifications, you want to test that, you could set up this network emulator after you've installed uh, the software on your laptop and then run the tests that you uh, prefer to run. In this case, I'm just running uh, iperf3 between PC and the server. With no delay configured, you just get a, a theoretical throughput here of 10 gigabits per second. Uh, you, you literally only have uh, about 100 microseconds of delay end to end in the, uh, in the scenario here. So naturally you're going to configure delay on the links in order to have a more real world scenario. Here for example, the total round trip time is 50 milliseconds. And based on another run of, uh, of iperf3, you can see that you get a more uh, realistic uh, uh, transfer rate of, uh, or basically bandwidth of uh, 10 megabits per second.
if you're generating bit errors on a link, another feature of, uh, of the core network emulator is you can write in the graphical user interface, you can set uh, bit rates. But in other network emulators, and, and in that case, all it's doing is it's, uh, is it's configuring TC for you on your host. Um, in other network emulators, you would co manually configure NetM or something like that on, uh, on one of the nodes in your network in order to emulate bit errors or, uh, or delay. And you can run Wireshark or any other network, uh, uh, or any other packet capture tool in order to uh, see what's going on inside your virtual network. And you can check every node in your virtual network and uh, explore the behavior that's going on. So in this case, of course, we see the uh, TCP retransmissions. We see that we have problems in our network. You can then uh, basically fix the problem and see the problem go away. Another scenario you might investigate is uh, routing failure. Um, in this case, I created what, you know, not, not an unreasonable type of scenario where someone might misconfigure a router. Uh, in this case, we go back to the original topology here, and uh, you can see the, the link that goes horizontally across between the two, uh, between the two rings. And on, on router nine, which is over on the right-hand side there, uh, you know, I think a reasonable failure would be that uh, somebody might try to configure it based on a template, might say that, uh, that uh, Ethernet zero, anyway. My example here is Ethernet zero, somebody uh, uh, basically uh, put uh, OSPF interface into silent mode on that router, thinking maybe that, that ETH, thinking maybe that every ETH zero was connected to a, uh, basically connected to a management interface or someplace where you don't want OSPF running. So in that case, um, you know, if you're looking at the OSPF database on the node, um, when everything's running properly, you can see all of the networks. After a failure occurs, after the, uh, after basically OSPF times out, then you see that uh, half your network has gone away. And these are just really simple scenarios. You can actually get a lot more complex. Uh, one of the presentations earlier this morning about um, you know, TCP uh, in a radio access network driving along the highway uh, core network emulator actually has the ability to uh, emulate uh, wireless networks, to uh, basically emulate the, the way that links are going to switch from one router to another as they pass uh, within range along, uh, along a path. And uh, the core network emulator can be, again, extended using its Python API to introduce movement. So you could actually automate the, uh, the movement of nodes through a network scenario like this. And uh, if you're making modifications to TCP or other software, you could run that real software on your emulator and see the impacts as you, as you go through that scenario. When you're doing uh, network emulation like this, you sometimes wonder, well, is this, am I going to get real results here? Is this going to be something that I can rely on? Um, there have been some uh, academic papers written about that. Um, one of them uh, was an attempt by the uh, people in Stanford working specifically with the Mininet network emulator uh, to replicate results from, uh, from real-world um, research and from uh, network simulation. And in, in those cases, in most cases, they have proved that the uh, network emulation is, uh, is very close to real-world results, assuming that you're running, uh, assuming that you're not using up all the resources on the host. This is just another uh, Wireshark capture of, a, of the OSPF uh, link state updates that would result from a router failure. So what are the tools that you might consider using, and why would you consider using them? And again, I, I point out that you know, these, tools are, these tools are really useful for people that, uh, that want the convenience of setting up a, a network on their laptop. Um, they, they make it easy for you to uh, to basically just try out new topologies, new scenarios. But all of the software and the configuration and everything like that still needs to be done by the user. Um, you're basically testing your own software on these nodes. You can, you're running real software on these nodes. Um, and, and so you're looking at emulating the functionality in your network. You're not necessarily, uh, you know, even though performance should be close to the real world network, as long as you're running very small networks here, um, it's not like simulation. It's not like using, for example, NS3 or something like that, where you can, um, you know, where you're really looking to uh, uh, ensure that you have a good view of the performance of these nodes. 
here we're emulating the functionality. Are things working the way I expect? Um, if you create a scenario out of one of these uh, network emulators, what you're trying to do is, uh, is explore unexpected, uh, unexpected functionality that may occur as you're, as you're working through the software that you're developing. The core network emulator, this is just a uh, screenshot. Uh, again, it's based on Linux namespaces, uses Linux bridging. It has a Python API, so it's very extendable. Um, and, uh, and its file format that it uses when you're, when you're saving network scenarios is, well, it can be a standard text file, it can also be XML, and you can also export it as a Python script. Again, uh, because it's extendable using Python, then after you've exported the Python script, you can then do some additional editing and actually create a, an automated test scenario for yourself as well. So I use the, uh, the core network emulator a fair bit. I will say it gets a little bit in the way um, because the, um, just the way that it works, it uses a paradigm of network services. So since it uses namespaces, this particular network emulator really tries to limit the amount of resources every single node in the network uses. So you have to know upfront which parts of the file system you need to mount on every node. You need to define the mount namespaces in, in addition to the network namespaces that are automatically configured for you in order to make sure that your software is going to work properly on every virtual node in this network. So you have to have a little bit of knowledge about what your software requires if it's not already set up for you because there's a lot of network services already available in the templates that come with, uh, with the core network emulator. And you can define your own services and add them in so then they become a template for anyone in your company who comes after you that just wants to use that, it then becomes point and click for them. Immunes is another interesting network emulator. The core network emulator was originally a fork of Immunes, so they've both gone their separate ways. Since then, uh, Immunes has been completely rewritten for Linux. It uh, works, basically all of the nodes are Docker containers. Open vSwitch is the switching technology. But it's, similarly, it uses Python. It's just as extendable, and it uses a similar f uh, file format for saving the uh, file topology or the, the network topology. Clunix is a very simple and easy to use network emulator. All of the nodes here are KVM uh, nodes. Uh, the original version of Clunix used uh, you know, TAP and TUN for connecting nodes together. Um, since then, the uh, development team has created something they call the, the Clunix switch. Um, but the, uh, every node there is basically a KVM machine if you wanted to uh, if you wanted to uh, use uh, different, uh, different Linux distributions, different kernels, uh, this is the type of network emulator you would use. The, um, the scripting language for this is just uh, straight uh, normal shell scripts. Uh, there's a Clunix command line that comes along with Clunix, and you, you use basically Clunix commands to execute on every node. And when you run the, uh, basically save the topology here, it just saves a big long script of Clunix commands that sets that up. Then afterwards, you can go back and edit that and, again, create very uh, complex um, network scenarios where every node is fully configured, um, all in the same script. Mininet is a special case network emulator. Um, you know, the nodes in Mininet are based on network namespaces. The switching is based on uh, open vSwitch. It's also based on Python, and you can uh, export the network topology as a Python script, edit it, and again, do uh, some pretty interesting things with the network topology. You can extend it to create new types of nodes. So it's not just for SDN. With a little bit of work, you can make Mininet work with, uh, basically make those nodes work like a standard router, for example. You end up using a host and uh, turning it into a router. Uh, Mininet seems to be very popular as SDN has becomes popular. I'll just point out here that um, you know, some individuals have extended Mininet. And there's a project called Mininet Wi-Fi that, uh, that uh, basically emulates uh, wireless. Um, so they, they've put a Wi-Fi driver in there. And then you can actually, uh, with, the, uh, with the Python language, you can script how these nodes move around. And you can actually have a fairly dynamic situation where nodes are coming in and out of range of each other. But that's really only useful for network uh, software-defined networking. VNX and NetKit are the first two network emulators that I ever came across. They're both on a based on a command line interface. Um, you would use uh, VNX uh, because it supports KVM or containers. 
you would use netkit if you wanted to use user mode, uh, uh, user mode Linux. Um, each one has a unique network description language, um, each one, but what's interesting about both of these is they, they're really designed for teaching networking to people, so they come with many prepackaged network emulation scenarios, and they're created for university level networking courses. So if you want to just set something up, you could use one of these uh, network emulators and use one of the prepackaged scripts that comes with it. I won't say a lot about GNS3. I'm sure most people here are familiar with it. Um, it's uh, mostly used for you know, running commercial routers in an emulated environment, but I will say it is becoming more Linux friendly with recent releases. Uh, and with release 2.0, which should be coming out soon, um, it, it might be, uh, it, I, I might consider actually that it's uh, usable as a, as a network emulator for emulating Linux nodes. It's not really based on uh, Linux networking technology. Uh, a, new, a new arrival in the network emulation space is the, uh, is the EVE network emulator. Again, also really focused more on the commercial routers. Um, but this particular network emulator is also Linux friendly, just not well documented for Linux, but you can, you can use it to run uh, Linux nodes. I won't say much about it. Just for people that uh, are downloading this presentation, I've uh, saved a series of links here. So I won't go through that. Um, I, I will say that in conclusion, you know, I wanted to sort of raise the awareness of what tools are possible for people that really want to work in, uh, on their own uh, laptop in a, uh, you know, create different scenarios in an ad hoc manner um, and uh, basically use real Linux software in an emulated environment so that they can investigate the behavior of either software they're writing or just software that they're, uh, that they're learning about. Thank you very much. Questions? Any questions? Do, do you know what Mininet Wi-Fi uses? So we have something called Hardware Sim, which is a kernel driver that lets you add stations and access points and run all the necessary software. I'm just yeah. curious if it uses that or if it has its own sort of, because you said it has its driver. Yeah, it uses Hardware Sim, it uses 811 okay. Hardware so Sim. It, it uses uh, the infrastructure we have there. Okay. Yeah. So in your view, uh, core versus immunes, I, I was kind of intrigued by core more than, than anything else because you use the Linux bridge. Which one is sort of more active development right now? In terms of uh, community, I would say that, uh, well, Mininet is by far the most active. Right. Core is reasonably active. They have a mailing list, and right. the mailing list is very active. However, uh, in terms of getting fixes into core, they're, mm. they, they seem to have slowed down. I see. Two years ago, they were very fast. Lately, they're slow. And immunes? Immunes, um, I would say they're slow. They're, uh, they, they sort of rewrote, the, rewrote it about uh, one year ago. Right. And since then, there hasn't been much activity. Well, OK. Any other questions? Just to point out that I think an attesto would work also very well in these environments, you know, so. I was thinking that when I saw your presentation. I was thinking similar idea, a, a scripting language to define a topology. No, no, but, but to, like, yeah. rather than using real machine, which is what I do, mm -hmm. you could use these virtual machines or namespaces and just use netesto as it is to specify, you know, the transfers, collect all the data, analyze the data, right, so. Good so point, it, you could combine it with, exactly. with one of these, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yuri, uh, do you think LNST will fit as well? I don't know where Yuri is. Yeah? So there's another one, LNST, mm -hmm. uh, which you may have not been aware of. Uh, okay, we'll send you to the penalty box for about five minutes, and then 